great to <laughs> see you this morning. Lovely to see you, Stephen. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Lovely welcome. To see you. Uh, Thank you. Do you know, it is extraordinary when, some, when you meet someone who you, you don't expect to ever meet because you're on the other side of the world most of the time, but in something that we have all watched for such a long time. I know. It, it must be remarkable seeing it all come to an end. It is extraordinary. At the last day of filming, oh, God, I can't even begin to tell you, driving to work, it's a 40-minute drive, and you're sitting there trying to suppress the emotion of it being your last day because you know you've got to get there, you've got to do the work, be professional, and the, the last scenes were very upbeat. So, you know, you've got to keep all that down. And then suddenly you hear someone say, OK, cut, that's a wrap. Yeah, and that's it. And that's it. You think that is it? So I quickly grabbed a photograph from the bookshelf, which belongs to me, <laughs> as I thought I can't leave that behind. And few trophies. A few trophies, and that's it. Oh, oh. gosh. And to have been in the series for so long, I mean, you had your on-screen family, but presumably in many ways, Susan, your wife, felt, you know, like your own family. I mean, I always associate you two together in spite of what was going on there, because you did get back together after oh, that oh, so incident many times. with Izzy, on and on again and off again. Yes, I think we married three times. <laughs> <laughs> the um, uh, Jackie Woodburn, who plays mm -hmm. Susan Kennedy, she's one of the main reasons I stayed so long was because our working relationship was so joyous. Mm -hmm. But we're the best pals. We worked together first in the early 80s, actually, on a cop show. Oh. She played my sister. Oh, right. um, And uh, so when I heard that she was playing Susan Kennedy, I was absolutely over the moon. In fact, I prank called her, pretending to be a journalist, to, to ask her how she felt about being cast in Neighbours. Really? Yeah. That's brilliant. And how did she feel? Oh, she worked out it was me pretty quick. <laughs> oh, right. I'll tell you Fantastic. what, I always, I always thought it was a shame that you two kept falling out and getting back, in the sense that, as a couple... Carl and Susan always just seem to work. I just really like them as a couple. It, it's true. Uh, although, I mean, you know, the foibles of, mar of marriages are such often that people do set, you know, fall apart or whatever. And, and I think that the audience related to the fact that they, no one was ever malicious in any, any of these breakups. It's just that they would really struggle with certain aspects of life, but they always found their way back to each other. Now, it's that little known fact. I, I got someone from, on Twitter last night saying, do not ask Alan about <laughs> this, do not ask him about. But it's a, so I, but I'm going to talk about Kylie. Oh, yeah. Because it wasn't your sort of first scene as an sort of extra or something with Kylie in, in the garage. It was a little short three-week part. Um, they didn't have a mechanic on Neighbours for three weeks. And they, so Kylie being an apprentice, she needed to have a supervising mechanic. So they brought me in. Nice little story. Of course, of course, deep, dark, secret story. And I got to work with her and it was divine. Um, she was so sweet. All the cast were wonderful. I knew a lot of them. And I'll, I'll never forget, I, I, one, I asked Kylie one day um, you know, how she was going, what was going on in her life, and she said she's very excited <clears throat> Excuse me, because she just released a song called Locomotion. <laughs> and it was extraordinary where it all went, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, I have to really fight the urge to call you Carl, and I'm sure people have the same response. When you've played a household name, you're sort of synonymous with the character yourself. But I, obviously, Alan, when I think of you on, on the show, and I did watch it for very many years, you often were strumming your guitar. Yes. Was that, and I know that's a big passion off screen as well. And you were only, I think I was reading on the show, sort of 36 weeks of the year because you were doing so many other things. That's right. Tell us about what's going to happen for you post Neighbours and is it going to involve your beloved guitar and music? Well, it is. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm now recording and, and playing country music and, and Americana music. I did a couple of gigs here in London, went to the Maverick Festival. Uh, I've just released an EP uh, called Dispatches, which I, I hope people will like to check out, and an album later in the year, and I will be back in September touring the music and also touring my Dr Carling conversation show. Oh, really? All over the UK, yes. Oh, okay. that's going to be interesting. So Neighbours isn't, isn't kind of ending for me. And then Jackie Woodburn and I return next year for the big Neighbours farewell tour, which is going right across the country. That's going to be huge, it's, actually. Well, it's almost completely sold out. Um, yeah. It's a massive thing, 17 dates. So Neighbours kind of for me is... Continuing on. Yeah. yeah, well, that's quite nice. We've got, we've got to ask, because there's going to be people who maybe aren't overly familiar with, with the show over recent years who are going to say, well, why in all these videos have you got hair? And now, you know, I know you've, you've, oh, you've, yes. you've recently had discovered you've got al alopecia. February or started, yeah, but very quick, too. I had some patches disappear in my beard, and I went to the doctor, and they said, I'll just rub some you know, minoxidil on it. And then suddenly, all through the head, and eventually, of course, I've had fans concerned about my health. Yeah, yeah. So I did a video explaining alopecia, and it's a good thing I did, I think, because a lot of people actually suffer in silence. So they, they mask it, they you know, wear wigs or whatever, and they don't talk to people about it. 
Or they get mercilessly bullied if they're young. Yeah. And how do you feel about it? Has it been something that's difficult for you and changing... Does that change your identity at all? Well, not really. I look, <clears throat> I look at myself in the mirror and go, well, crikey, who's that bloke? <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a, it is a weird thing, particularly when you lose things like eyebrows and things like that. kind of a bit disorientating. But luckily I'm of an age where I sort of go, well, it is what it is. You know, but for it to happen to a young, a young you know, six-year-old girl or whatever, or a six-year-old yeah. boy... It's, it's pretty tough, and apparently a lot of, it happens to a lot of women after childbirth. Um, they have you know patches, thing. but l luckily, mercifully, a lot of people get their hair back. Yeah. yeah. Oh well.